This poster will review Krigler-Najjar syndrome. We'll talk about its symptoms, treatment options, and long-term prognosis. But first things first, what is Krigler-Najjar syndrome? It's a recessive genetic condition, meaning it requires two copies of a faulty gene. One is inherited from each parent. It's a disorder of bilirubin metabolism. If you look at the graphic in the center of the poster, we review normal bilirubin metabolism. Your red blood cells break down into something called heme, which then further breaks down into unconjugated bilirubin. This process is how your body gets rid of old blood cells. The unconjugated bilirubin normally in the liver is then processed or metabolized into conjugated bilirubin. In patients with krigler najjar they are missing the enzyme that completes this step. The enzyme is known as UGT1A1. In healthy patients, once the liver does the conjugation, conjugated bilirubin is excreted through stool and urine, and the body is free of any resulting toxins or metabolites. In children with krigler najjar they still have high levels of unconjugated bilirubin that builds up in the blood because it can't be excreted. If levels become high enough, they can be absorbed by the brain. So like I mentioned, the enzyme needed to process bilirubin, UGT1A1, is absent in certain types of krigler najjar that being type 1, or is present but does not work optimally in type 2. Type 1, as you can imagine, is usually more severe than type 2. Just for a review of the nomenclature, unprocessed bilirubin is called unconjugated bilirubin. That is the step before it reaches the liver. And after the liver does its job, it is called conjugated bilirubin. In krigler najjar they are missing that enzyme that does the conjugation, so they have high levels of unconjugated bilirubin. But what does that look like? What are the symptoms? Most often, children will appear yellow or jaundice. Severe cases demonstrate jaundice as newborns, but less severe cases can manifest in childhood or even as teenagers. Children with type 1, where the proper enzyme is missing, may have neurologic symptoms because high unconjugated bilirubin can be absorbed by the brain. This can look like a lot of things, such as lethargy, seizures, changes in limb or eye movements. If your doctor suspects krigler najjar syndrome in your child, the diagnosis is made with genetic testing, in which they will take blood and test for any mutations in the UGT1A1 gene. You may next be wondering, if your child has krigler najjar how is it treated? The goal of treatment, as you can imagine, is to lower the unconjugated bilirubin to prevent any damage to the brain. This can be accomplished through several methods, the most common of which is phototherapy. As you can see, a baby in a tanning bed of sorts receives light therapy that helps the body lower unconjugated bilirubin levels. Other treatment options are phenobarbital, a medication that helps the liver conjugate bilirubin. This is used more in type 2, where some of the enzyme is present but does not work perfectly and is not so effective in type 1, where the enzyme is fully missing. Albumin is a treatment option that can bind to bilirubin and prevent it from reaching the brain. Or your doctor may opt for plasmapheresis, in which bilirubin is taken out of the blood similar to a dialysis machine. The long-term outcomes of krigler najjar have greatly improved in the last few decades. These patients now live through adulthood in both type 1 and type 2 because we have standardized methods to detect jaundice from the time that babies are born. Type 1 patients being more severe may need lifelong phototherapy, light therapy, and eventually a liver transplant but liver transplants are curative for krigler najjar These patients remain at lifelong risk of spikes in their bilirubin and its potential to reach the brain, especially if they get sick, dehydrated, take certain medications, or don't stick to their phototherapy schedule. 
but now that you know the basics of what to look out for and how to treat your child, you are in great hands to prevent any of those future outcomes.